that you would send your Holy Spirit among us, helping each one of us to grow more and more in you, to allow your life to be in our lives more and more, that each of our lives in this church would continue to be more and more light in this world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I must preach the sermon in the entire prayer there. <clears throat> Over the last two weeks, I've talked about overcoming fear uh, and how can we do that and how can we turn our country around. We talked about that last week. And, and in both of those instances, obviously, I pointed us to Jesus. Now I've got a third question that I want to answer this morning. Is Jesus worth following? Let's find out. In the gospel today, Jesus had already called uh, the twelve, the apostles, those who would be his uh, inner circle, if you will. Others had started to follow as well. Uh, they would be called disciples, but these were the apostles. And they were invited to this wedding in Cana of Galilee. Now there's some very interesting points in this wonderful story that all of us are familiar with. Not the least of which is, why on earth would Mary think that Jesus would do anything to bring wine into this place? Other than to say, go down the street and buy some wine at the local ABC store. How would she think in her head that he would do something to bring wine into this wedding. So she must have had some idea. She knew who Jesus was. Maybe he kept bringing food and drink to their table every night. I don't know. But that's another story. What I want to focus on is not so much that Jesus turned water into wine and they, had, they were able to continue their celebration. The response those 12 apostles. And it said, and his disciples believed on him. So he had just called them, they were beginning to follow him. You know, he's a rabbi, he's a teacher. That is not uncommon in Israel for rabbis and teachers to call people to come and follow them and to learn uh, about the faith of There was something different about Jesus, and they followed him. And when they saw this miracle, they realized he's not just a rabbi. He's not just a teacher. There's more going on, and so they believed on him, John reports to us. And in the NIV version, it says that his disciples put their faith in him. Now everything has changed. He's manifested just a glimpse, just a small glimpse of his glory. And so now they believe. What about today? Jesus is not here physically for us to see him do any miracles. For people who don't believe to see those miracles. So how can people believe today? How can people who are not seeing him in the flesh, teaching and preaching and healing and doing miracles, how can they believe? How can anyone know that he is worth following? I'll tell you. I'll answer the question. They know he's worth following because they see Jesus. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, when I wrote that question down, how does anyone know that he is worth following? I struggled for a while to come up with an answer. I really did. I had to pray and pray and pray. And God finally said, hey, here, the answer is inside of me. Just like he's inside all of us who have chosen to believe, like the apostles did that day in Cana of Galilee. 
And so Jesus put it this way later uh, on in his teaching to the apostles. He said this in John chapter 14. Before long, the world will not see me anymore. But you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. That's how people will know that Jesus is worth following, when they see the Jesus that is in us. When we have accepted Jesus for who he is and for what he's done, then people around us will see the difference. They'll see what Paul was writing about to the church in Rome in today's epistle lesson. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If your enemy is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That's a message we need in our country more than ever. When you see someone carrying a banner that talks about the, the good of anarchy and chaos, People need to see the Jesus inside us. They need to see us doing good to those who call themselves enemies of us. We may not call them them enemy, and we should not call them enemy. Because God loves them and wants them to see the Jesus in us as we do good to them. I want to end with a story. As an example, uh, Martin Luther King gave this story in one of his sermons. Uh, it all started when Abraham Lincoln was running for president. There was one man, or many, but there was one man that kind of stood out as someone who really did not want him to be elected. And he went around the country, literally traveling around the country, speaking against Abraham Lincoln and his presidency, possible presidency. Even to the point of saying, do you really want to elect someone tall and lanky and as ignorant as this man? Yeah, that's what he said. Well, Lincoln was, as you know, elected president. And one day he sat around a table with his advisors and those who uh, gave him counsel and said, we need to choose someone, or I need to choose someone to be Secretary of War. At this point, of course, the Civil War had not started. This is just a normal cabinet position. And so Abraham Lincoln put forth uh, Edwin McMaster's Stanton. And his advisors said, are you out of your mind? He's the one that was working so hard against you when you were running for election for president. That was the man who had said those things, ugly things about Abraham Lincoln. And Lincoln said, he's the best man for the job. And he appointed Edwin McMaster Stanton to be the secretary. He did good towards Mr. Stanton. Later, when Lincoln was assassinated, Stanton said, here was a man for the ages, and gave some very strong words about character, courage, and goodness. Someone who considered himself an enemy of me, he overcame with good. 
do not be overcome by evil, but overcome with good. Let us pray. Almighty God, there is only one way, Father, that we can love all those people both the ones that love us and the ones that need us. And that is through your strength and power, through your mercy and grace in our lives. So, Lord Jesus, pour forth your presence into our hearts and minds in a greater and greater way. Christ our 